Hello everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion. Six processing clusters, 24 streaming multiprocessors, 3,072 CUDA cores, 192 texture units, 96 ROP units, 1,000 MHz base clock, 1075 MHz on the boost clock, 7 GB memory data rate, 3 MB of L2 cache, 12 GB of GDDR5 memory at a 384-bit memory interface, a 28 nanometer process, 8 billion transistors, 250 watt TDP, plus it's DirectX 12 ready. This thing will play all your games and future games at 4K resolutions at frame rates that are acceptable with all the eye candy. But most of all, and last but not least, there is a 60% performance increase over its prior generation. Now, try to get that out in 45 seconds or less. Introducing the NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan X. High Tech Legion, hardware and software reviews, gaming gadgets and mobile, plus a ton of opinions. Subscribe now. The NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan X and its predecessor, the Titan, are similar and different in many ways. You still are getting the aluminum shroud, but instead of it being silver, they went to a black matte finish. You're still getting the window to see the heat sink, which is still nickel plated and copper infused. We still have the same type of fan. This is magnesium embedded, dual ball bearing, and it exhausts from the rear. It is still PCIe 3.0, and it is also quad SLI capable. What are some of the differences? Well, TDP is the same. It's still 250 watts. You still require an 8 and a 6 pin power connector. It still has 12 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. There is a difference in the memory. It's a higher memory speed. It's still 384 bit, but we have a higher memory speed. We also have single precision memory. The single precision memory is, or actually, I'm sorry, single precision meaning that it's utilizing all 3072 CUDA cores where this one was dual precision, where you were only getting about 2,700 CUDA cores on the single, and with, with the dual precision, you were getting a, roughly a little bit over 800 CUDA cores. So this one was not using all the CUDA cores for gaming, where this one will. Of course, there's also the Maxwell processor. The Maxwell processor consumes less power, but what it does is it boosts this performance up to 60% from its predecessor, the Titan. So let's take a look at what we have for our outputs. The outputs on this one, which differ from the Titan, are a single DVI, three display ports, and one HDMI, where the other one had a dual DVI, one display port, and, and an HDMI. Overall, I could say that I'm very impressed with the GeForce GTX Titan X. It overclocked very well, actually got over 300 megahertz on, on the boost on this one. Um, one little tricky thing about it was I had to actually set it to aggressive on the fan mode, which basically cranked the fan up while I was, while I was benchmarking it to about 82%. The fan was audible, but it was bearable. 
it wasn't a siren or a jet engine while it was running, which was very good. But what happened was it did actually keep the temperature down to about 66. Now, when you're running it stock, because of the TDP, it's set to 83 degrees Celsius. It's going to run at 83 degrees Celsius. I'm going to tell you that much right now while you're just benchmarking or playing games. But because I set it too aggressive, I overclocked it. And I wanted to get the maximum performance out of it so it didn't crash on me. I went to the aggressive stage in Precision X by EVGA. It actually kept the temperatures down to 66. And I found that to be a sweet spot with this, 66. Once it got to 67, 68, it did become unstable. If it hit 70, then it definitely was unstable. So if you want to get a very high overclock out of this car, you're going to have to use some advanced and aggressive fan speeds. you got to kick it up. So you're going to take a little bit more noise with it if you want to go with that aggressive with an overclock. As I said, I ran a lot of games with it, and I got some great performance boosts just with the overclock. Now for the card itself. One thing that I like about it is, is that we're getting the single precision uh, CUDA cores. Why? Because we're utilizing all the CUDA cores for gaming. I'm not using this for scientific stuff. I'm using it for gaming. I want to utilize all the CUDA cores, so that does make a good difference. One thing I don't like is that it doesn't have a backplate. Even though NVIDIA says that they feel it doesn't need a backplate because it, want, it, it does, has a better transference of temperature without it, especially if you're using it in SLI, I feel that a backplate for a single card might be the better way to go because it's going to give you a little bit more heat transference into that backplate to keep it a little bit cooler. But in any case, it still runs very well. Now, 4K gaming is going to be a must here coming up soon. I'm transitioning over to 4K stuff. I know quite a few people are. As the prices come down, you're probably going to want to go there. This is definitely a 4K gaming card. It's a single GPU, that's right. Single GPU 4K gaming card. I tested it with everything that I could throw out of it. Some of the highest, you know, uh, demanding, most demanding games today, and it worked very well. I was able to crank up the eye candy and get acceptable frame rates, most times within that 30 frames per second range. Of course, you could crank it down just a little bit, and you could get better frame rates, or maybe use the MFAA, which I have a video of that is going to be linked in here that you could watch to see how that works. But using NVIDIA MFAA, you'll definitely be able to get that performance and get that, that MSAA quality with less of a performance hit. The other thing, a couple things are, is that this is definitely DirectX 12 ready. It is ready to play future games. It has the great memory buffer, so you're not going to be starving for any memory. And as per a price, you'll have to wait till the end of this video because at this time, I don't even know the price of it because they're not announced. They didn't announce it until 10 minutes before I launched this video. Now, I do have an overclocking video coming up for this. I'm going to go ahead and wait till Friday, March 20th to launch that. I'm going to give those of you who are considering purchasing this card an opportunity to actually get the card before I launch the video. It'll show you how I did it, what I did, and what troubles that I had getting this to almost a 400 megahertz overclock on this one. Other than that, I want to say thank you for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. That's right, subscribe to the High Tech Legion channel for great reviews and more upcoming new things. Make sure you visit our webpage, www.hightechlegion.com, and go to our forums if you have any questions. That's the best thing to do. We get so many comments on YouTube, I can't, myself and the other guys, we can't answer them all. We need you to come to our forum, so hightechlegion.com, front slash forum. You're there, baby. Ask the questions in there. We have a lot of people who are willing to help you out. Of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You'll see, you'll see the uh, URLs at the end of this video. Stay thirsty, my friends. Have a great day. I will see you the next time. Bye-bye.